Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to have a look at the MX Linux 23 Release Candidate 2, released just a couple days ago, July 15th. And here we are on the ISO, so we can either boot it, we can check the integrity. VirtualBox video means it's going to be loading with the specific drivers for VirtualBox. We can boot from the hard disk, do a memory test, or we can switch to the Grub bootloader. So we're just going to go ahead with the default option for now. And what we're going to see here is it's going to boot us into the a live session where we can get in there and we can go ahead and install the system. Now, I probably should have picked the virtual box um, video because, oh, okay, it is actually loading full screen. This is the first XFCE distro I've loaded in a long time that loads by default uh, on the um, uh, on full screen. Usually XFCE distributions are loading in a smaller window and I have to uh, work with it. So here's our MX welcome screen. We'll have a look at the welcome screen on the actual install. I want to have a brief look at the installer uh, because the installer is something that uh, MX Linux is, th they just do this better than anybody. And the, a lot of the reason is there's so many options that you can do inside the installer. And there are also so many options that you can do for uh, setting up your users or not. It's easy to set up all the different things you need. So over here, you can see we can customize the disk layout. And so if you do this, you can uh, go ahead and make some specific changes to the drive. For most of you, you'll probably just use the regular install using the whole disk. And then you can encrypt it or not encrypt it. Of course, if you encrypt it, this is going to use Lux. It's going to force you into EXT4. Now, they've been doing some ButterFS tests, and um, there's actually, there's a few few issues they're having currently with ButterFS and TimeShift, uh, but I'm not really going to focus on that. So, yes, let's go ahead and do that. And I did forget that's actually already going to kill the drive <laughs> that I was doing. That's okay. Um, so... MX Linux, the one of the things that makes the installer nice is it begins the installation process early on. So I didn't actually mean to install it over this virtual box. I meant to go through the settings, and yeah, I forgot it does all those because I already have an MX Linux installed, although I did select a virtual machine that I don't really care if it gets destroyed. It is just that one here. So anyway, now over here we have our various settings. We can do our computer name, our computer domain. And here, if you're going to be doing any network sharing using the Samba servers, you can go ahead and enable that. If that's something you know you're not going to do, you can go ahead and uncheck that. And that setting and the options and the uh, files for that will not even be loaded onto the system. So if you're looking for a good, clean system, you can go ahead and do that. And so we'll go ahead and turn that off for now. Here you can choose your locale and your time zones, and then you can even use your formatting. And then the other thing I really like about MX is you can come in here and choose what you want. So if you know you're not going to be printing with this, yeah, just disable cups. You don't need any of that. Uh, this particular computer does not have Bluetooth, so there's no need for putting that on. Uh, RSync file copying tools. Here's ZRAM swap, compressed swap space. And here's your sudo. So you can turn on or turn off sudo. So if you do not want to be able to access sudo, you can do that. Uh, you can run your crons or not. So there's a lot of things over here that you can go ahead and set up on your system. So now it's actually waiting for more information. You'll see that the installation is caught up with where I am at. So now we'll go ahead and hit our next, and now we need to do a username. So let's just call it MX Linux, MX Line apparently, All right. and then uh, give it a super secret password. It's definitely not one two three. And then you can turn on the root administrator account or keep it off. This is something it'd be nice if Debian did because we keep on forgetting. You know, if you leave that thing blank because, oh, if you read the screen, yeah, we don't always have time to read the screen when we're doing these. But, you know, you can do auto live, uh, auto login. And there's also save live desktop changes. So if I've went on here and I've changed everything, maybe I've moved the panel or something, then those live desktop changes will be configured. Um, I've never actually put that to the test. Should we give that a try let's go ahead and hit panel let's go ahead and panel preferences let's put it this way and let's 
unlock the panel. Let's drag the panel down here, put it where any sane operating system should have it. There we go. Now let's go ahead and save live change, uh, desktop changes. Let's just see if that actually happens to do what it needs to do. So now it's setting our system configuration and, oh, sorry, failed to create a user directory. What? I've never actually had it fail before. That's exciting. Hmm. Now I'm confuzzlicated and I promise you it worked perfectly fine on my original test. Let's go ahead and uh, run through that one more quick time just to go ahead and double check. That might very well be, be because I've never actually changed any desktop configuration settings as my system was actually working, uh, installing. That's probably what happened. I probably just broke that. Uh, so there's that. Here's your live log. See, we've done a few things there. And now the other thing I'm going to note here, there's some things about running this in ButterFS. There's some things about uh, a few extra options. And one of the challenges that I see here is I don't actually see the ability to uh, use any of the alternative file systems, at least here. Maybe if we go back and we do the uh, just do your basic um, uh, manual partitioning, you can go ahead and do all that. But we're going to go ahead and run through this one more time. Um, so the error showed up as I'm 100% sure it was me. Let's go ahead and do that. And now it's going to copy the new system. And once we get the new system copied, and then hopefully we should have everything that we need. All right, so it says it's finished and uh, no errors that time. So we'll go ahead and hit the reboot mode. And then this is going to have us um, reboot the system. Have to hit enter there and it's going to kick the ISO out and then we'll see it gets us uh, right on in. So let's go ahead and let it boot and then we will log in. And so there you can see that we had moved the panel down here to the bottom because that was one of the live changes that we did. And now when we go to install, you can see that the panel is down there at the bottom. Now I might want to make some changes. I'd kind of prefer uh, things, you know, the power be over here and the menu be over here. But other than that, that's okay. So if you happen to be new to uh, MX Linux, uh, you can go ahead and um, make those changes here. Let's go ahead and right click and move to there. And then we're going to move. I'm going to move it over to here. I like that spot better. And then there is a Thunar. Let's see what else is over here. Uh, we're going to remove that one because I don't use those. And then let's, oop, I accidentally added a new panel. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, delete the panel. <laughs> I accidentally added a second panel there. And what I wanted to do is hit close on that and panel and add items. And we're going to add a show desktop. Add that. And that's exactly where I want it to be. Close that. And one more item here. We're going to do panel preferences and relock the panel. Now I have my show desktop over here. I have my menu over here and we have everything working the way I wanted to see it. Now, the major changes that we have inside of this version of MX Linux, of course, this is based on the new Debian 12 that just came out. There's a few things that are doing by default here. I do not recall if in the past the um, firewall was enabled by default, but in this one it is. And they did make a point about this. So uh, you can see here the... Uh, universal firewall is active. I'm not sure if that is something that has always been done. They made a point to bring that up in the release notes. Also, the next thing that we'll see is the uh, audio system has changed from Pulse Audio over to Pipewire. So those of you that like to curse Pulse Audio will be very pleased to know that that has now been officially replaced with Pipewire by default. So uh, I don't know if that's going to cause audio to go really good or audio to go really bad. I'll kind of leave it to you to figure that part out. Go ahead and expand this guy out a little bit. Let's 
Okay, that thing is annoying to work with. Let's just see if HTOP is installed. That's better anyway. There we are. So we're running on only 684 megabytes out of the 6 gigs of RAM. And that guy works out really well. The other major change we have here with this version of MX Linux is the default is to use a swap file instead of a swap partition. All right, so now we have um, now we have our MX Linux. Let's go ahead and give you a little bit of a preview of everything else. Right here it says no updates available. I think that that is just not checked yet because on the one that I had installed earlier, the one I was going to run the uh, review through here, it actually does pop up and say there's 43 uh, updates available. So we'll go ahead and let that do its thing while we look at the various other tools inside of here. So MX Linux is really good in that it has a lot of extra tools that most other distros don't use. In fact, I use MX Linux on my writing computer where I do all, my, all of my writing. Uh, because the, it has the extra tools, it works really, really well on a super lightweight computer. That computer that I have is a, a Lenovo S21e, very low spec computer. And MX Linux on it works perfectly. You would not even tell it's a low spec computer with how well it runs. So we have a lot of fun tools over here. The first thing is we have our MX Tools panel on the left. These are unique to MX Linux, well, for the most part. We have a live USB maker. We can do a system snapshot. We also have a cleanup. This is going to do a cache cleanup. If you're having issues with the boot, you can go ahead and run the simple boot repair. Usually this is going to rerun your Grub update and things like that. We have boot options as well. So if you want to see what other options you have inside of your boot, you can set your menu timeout. Now these are the types of settings you can do. Usually after you do it by changing some configuration files and rerun a Grub update. But this one here, you can see here's your default options. Uh, what are you booting to? Uh, we also, you'll also notice here, MX Linux uh, does use SysV, uh, not SysV, uh, uh, not SystemD. Uh, I think it's Sysinit. I think I forget. It does not use SystemD by default, but if you would like to use it, you have the option uh, under the advanced options. So if you want to use SystemD by default, you can actually boot it directly into SystemD by default without uh, having to go into the menus to do that. You can enable saving last boot choice. You can use flat menus. Uh, you can set your timeout and your other options that you have. And you can see the, the theme file is what we have over there. We have our logo over here and then uh, detailed or very detailed messages. So if you want to go ahead and make any changes, now what it's going to do in the background, it's going to do an update grub. And so you will have your various items. So you can do uh, boot options there as well. Samba configuration may not work if we disabled Samba. Um and I'm pretty sure that uh, we couldn't even add one easily because we disabled that during the setup. We have some other configurations. We have about, if you're running NVIDIA drivers, you can run that. We also have Codex uh, in, um, installer in case you need more multimedia codecs. And then there's Conky. If you're unaware, Conky is this little guy over here. It's giving us the, the time, the, the hard drive usage, memory usage, CPU usage. You can go ahead and go over here and make some changes to this. So you can stop it, you can start it, you can move it, uh, you can put it on all desktops or just a single desktop, and then you can do long or short formats. So basically you can do a lot of things with Conky. So those are the various tools that you have. Now you see this option down here, hide individual tools from the menu. If you go down into your settings, there's a lot of things and some of these are going to show up inside of the menu here. And if you don't want those all in the menu, you can go ahead and click on the button there. Uh, other options we have, we can tweak our sounds. We can use uh, look at the user installed packages. Uh, there's a deb installer, a package installer. We can fix GPG keys in case something's going wrong with your repository. These little tools, single button clicks from inside of the uh, inside of the, the the settings panel are very useful. There was another distro I was going to look at for today, and it's broken something. And a simple little click button would probably fix it. Uh, because it's based on Arch, I know what I need to do. The problem is it's an immutable Arch, so I have no idea where I need to do it. <laughs> and so the system is effectively broken. I have no option except to uh, kill the thing. 
All right, so that's the MX Tools. Over here are the MX Package Installer. This is one of the best user-friendly package installers because it doesn't contain absolutely everything, but it contains just enough. So you can go into your audio and you can see what the various options are. So Audacious, Audacity, here's Pulse Effects, uh, Spotify. So you have a lot of different options in here. Here's your various web browsers. You can see Firefox is the default. We could do Firefox ESR, Chromium. We have Brave, Pale Moon, uh, Waterfox G3. Of course, Waterfox is now independent of the crazy system one. Here's uh, you can install children. No, I'm sorry. That's just applications for children. Man, I was thinking you could install a bunch of kids under this thing. And we have a series of other desktop environments. So if you want to experiment with other desktop environments, you can go ahead and do that from inside of here. Uh, it just has a lot of software here in a very easy to use format. It also has a lot of other options up here at the top. So we can look at various repos. This is going to uh, you know download whatever information we have. So you have a few different options up there for um, for enabling your repos. So effectively, you see here every small little package that we have uh, available. Uh, basically, it's going to force your, your upgrades. I'm not sure why it says enabled repos. I would expect to see a list of repositories, not a list of packages. Um, so this is your test repo. Um, so this is kind of the upcoming experimental or the testing Debian backports, these are the things that you'll find inside of like Debian SID. So it's going to be upgraded packages, the experimentation for the next run of Debian. See, there's not many in here. That's because Debian just released. And then we also have flat packs. So you can go in here and you can show uh, available flat packs. I'm not sure if anything is specifically configured. It looks like it, it looks like probably Flathub is. Uh, most likely configured in here. Otherwise, it wouldn't be downloading any package information. All right, so we do have a lot of uh, repository applications over here, and that is FlatHub. You can tell, oh, no, don't do that again. All right, so it's downloading from FlatHub. So if you were to add other repositories, you can go ahead and do that. And so here's where you can add remote repositories if you want. You can remove repositories. So if you want to get rid of FlatHub, replace it with something else, you can go ahead and do that. So this does have a really nice uh, package installer available. The other thing here is uh, the updates item uh, login here will take you to Synaptic Package Manager. But if there are updates, it's going to take you to a different screen. So looks like uh, there it has now triggered that we click the button now it has triggered that there are updates you can see now it is green so now if we click the button it's going to come over here it's going to show us all of the packages available to upgrade or install you can automatically answer yes and you can automatically close the terminal we're not going to push the upgrades on this right now just to show you how it works so this is uh, here's your applications uh, by default we have Pretty much just enough good stuff here to make it feel like a good system. Some people might say it's a little bit too much. There's GTK hash if you need to do uh, verify hashes of, uh, of different applications. Here's a Genie icon browser. Here's a couple simple games. Graphics. Our internet. Our multimedia. So there are certainly enough tools over here to show us everything that we need. We even have an, an ebook reader uh, here as well by default. So if you have ebooks, you can do that. I think it didn't show up in any of the um, any of the other tools options. It'd be nice if this were in the tools menu, but they do have an ad block system. And this is basically going to go in and update your host file with a variety of different things. So you can see the different stuff that you might want to block. Uh, block social media, yes, please. And then unblock everything. The unblock everything is going to go ahead and um, clear out your host file. So what this is going to do is it's going to make the adjustment to your host file. So let's do a sudo nano etsy and hosts. And we'll see that that is what is in our host file. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll just, for the simplicity, we're just going to go ahead and run that on a couple times. You can see it's downloading from rod i you know whatever that source was happened too quickly host file restart the browser to see changes you don't have to restart the whole system just the browser so you can see now that we have a ton of stuff inside of our host file 
So these are all sorts of various uh, known sites that are going to be malicious of some form or another or otherwise uncouth sites. So that's how that guy is going to work. So this was what makes MX Linux such a really good system overall. And with this new release, we get some some smoothed out adjustments. We get the Universal Firewall, Pipewire, and of course the Debian 12 updates. So this system is one I've used for many years. It works very well. And particularly if you have a lower spec computer, I would run this on your lower spec computer, especially if you want to experiment with different desktop environments. It's very easy to install them and test them out. And then uh, you also have the option between your initialization engine, whether you want to use system D or it's going to be crazy which one it is. Uh, Y'all will know, check the comments. Somebody will have corrected me as to which the default is. I don't think it's SysV, but it's one of the other initialization systems. So there's your look at MX Linux. This is the next release candidate, which should be out sometime soon as uh, once this is all finalized out. So thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash t-o-m-m or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy... Switching to Linux.